a regular viewer of the channel, there might be some guitars that you're very used to seeing me playing and some guitars that you're less used to seeing me playing. And uh, I guess one of the things when you kind of start doing this YouTube kind of gear demo stuff is that people, I guess, always assume that you're going to be paid to demo pretty much everything. Also, I think if you make lots of videos like me, you can start to see which are my kind of favorite guitars. These are three guitars of mine that I don't really play that often. I kind of wanted to explore whether it's maybe time to sell these things or something like that. This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. The first guitar that I don't really play as much as many of my others, well I say many of my others, I've got kind of a few guitars that are in like key rotation, right? I have a Hercules three-way stand over here and generally on that I have my yellow K line and then another two spots kind of I circulate. Uh, at the moment I've been playing the K line Del Mar quite a bit. My two guitars that I've got in my gig bag at the moment are the Twattercaster and the Fender Player 2 Telecaster, which I 
don't really think the player two Telecaster is going to stick around for much longer um, after gigging it a couple of times. Yeah, this is the K line Springfield. This is the gold top. This is the most different to any of the other K lines that I have. Now, of course, it's very much based on a Stratocaster. If you don't know about K line guitars, they're made by a couple of chaps now. Chris is the main guy in Missouri. Um, and I started playing uh, the blue K line, Ice Blue, in about 2018, 2019. And since then, when I saw used K lines come up for sale, I would tend to buy them. I bought the yellow one. I bought this gold one. I bought the British Racing Green one, which I sold to David Beebe. And uh, yeah, we'll come on to some more ones. That I think basically what I've found, and maybe you're similar, is that when you find a guitar that you like, sometimes, certainly in the past, I'd be looking to try and find another one like it rather than just enjoying the one you've got. And in some ways, that, that can be a good thing. But in others, you just end up with excess guitars and you know I have more guitars really than space and space is kind of a thing that would be good in the house sometimes right so this is the gold one it's got a roasted um, maple neck and also the soft V shape it's very relict um, like super super checked um, but I do enjoy playing it it does have a slightly different flavor to the other K lines because of that soft V uh, I don't know whether you guys like the look of it or uh, like the sound of it versus anything else I ever play, but that is one that actually I really, really like the look of. Um, and it's one that maybe I think, would I regret selling that? So, I don't know. It's difficult, very difficult when you really like a guitar to decide whether to keep it or sell it. You know, I've got loads of guitars, you know, at least two other strats that I prefer to this so maybe this deserves a new home I don't know let me know your thoughts on that I guess if you've got a serious offer on any of these guitars you could try e emailing me I could the worst thing I could do is say no thanks um, we've got the Gibson Les Paul standard which I've got a real kind of um, thing that I go through phases of thinking I should sell this you know I've even had it on eBay for a while and then you leave it on stand and play it and suddenly the guitar seems to be a bit more special than you first thought to you. Um, and I don't know, this is kind of like, I guess, like a, a bit of the thing where you don't really want something until the chance comes for it to be taken away. Um, what made a big difference for me was top wrapping it and also just leaving it on a stand and playing it more often. It's not a particularly light example. It is from 2002. Um, and I guess it took buying a Les Paul and going through some of that process to figure out that really I don't necessarily need a Les Paul. Um, but what this does do is keeps the door shut to uh, rash purchases of other Les Paul shaped instruments that may say Murphy on them. Uh, so th this has stuck around for, I think, good reason and stopped me doing other silly things. And has seen off uh, an R8 as well, which I, on a stupid whim, decided that I might buy an R8. And then I thought, actually, what on earth am I doing? And sent it back because it had a flaw, which was obvious. Um, but yeah, that's my Gibson Les Paul 2002 standard. It's got a 50s neck. Um, I got Monty's to put in um, some underwound paths. Um, so they're kind of very low output relative to other Les Pauls. I kind of like the sound of it, kind of like the feel of playing it, but I don't do it very often. Uh, I have gigged it a couple of times and I've really enjoyed that experience, um, but I can get a pretty similar experience gigging with an ES335. It does definitely feel a little bit redundant to me, this guitar, for sure. And talking of redundant guitars, here's one for the book. So this is my beautiful, I think, vintage white... Um, K-Line Springfield. This one has his K-Line signature pickups in it, which are very close to a lot of dirty blondes. Um, and this one basically put up a picture on his Instagram. And uh, I'd been kind of looking at this sort of, you know, relict white strat. And when he put it up, I thought, well, that seems like a guitar that I'd really like. And 
This probably is the K line that I've played the least of all, to be honest with you. It is a great guitar, very lightweight. I think it's about seven pounds and two ounces. My good buddy Jake Loosemore, when Monty's were fixing up his strat, gigged this one a couple of times. It's a great guitar. Um, the rosewood has a kind of purpley tint to it, interestingly enough. Nicely rolled fretboard edges and yeah, a very usable trim actually. And, but again, it just kind of, this is one of those ones that sits in the cupboard for most of the time. Um, I've had a couple of other friends borrow it, but yeah, it's, um, it's one of those things where I've got kind of three other K-Line Springf Springfields and um, those ones I tend to play more. And what I've also found with this, and maybe this is the same for you guys, but in a lot of ways, playing a guitar a lot or playing one specific guitar a lot, I find tends to reward you like the guitar itself starts to feel more comfortable to you it ages with you a bit more if you're able to put more hours in on that one instrument um you kind of develop a bit of a bond with it as well as starting to love the way it looks and so maybe i should play this one more as i say these are some guitars that i don't really feel like i play enough um uh, yeah i don't know if you <laughs> as i said if you have a serious kind of thinking that you really want one of these then you can feel free to email me and uh, if it's a fair price then I'll probably let I guess one or two of these maybe could go um, but these are like guitars that I think are fairly special but that I don't play enough to, to warrant keeping them at the moment but again is this the sort of thing where you'd regret it because um, you know K-Lines at some point in time are going to be a bit more difficult to get hold of potentially um, and maybe this is going to be thought of as a good era for them or maybe this kind of tiny boutique guitar maybe those are never as desirable as you know like a Fender or anything like that but I quite like them so yeah these are the guitars that I rarely play and I'm going to put the other guitars away for a bit so for maybe the next week or so you might see these guitars on the channel a bit more. I, I don't think they're gonna sound particularly much different to what you normally hear me playing because they're so similar. And I guess that's the thing. Let me know if you're kind of a person who's collected a bunch of strats over the years. It's probably not uncommon. I was actually using the new preset that I put together with the Marshall 2203 for Helix in this video. I thought it sounds really good with all of those guitars. So go check that out in the Gumroad folder if you want to. Um, and let me know your thoughts. Which of these guitars should I sell, if any? Uh, shoot me an email if you've uh, got a hankering for one of these. But if not, I'm very happy to, <laughs> to keep playing them. Um, it's just a, one of those thoughts where it's like, do I really need these things? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. It, it kind of reminds me of Keith from Five Watt World, who had some really nice guitars lying around, and it kind of consolidated them into a few less guitars. And I think in some ways having a bit less gear sometimes can be a bit of a goal uh, of mine as well, where it's like, okay, I don't need to have a million strats. Just having a couple that I really like is, is plenty. I'm not trying to collect this gear per se.